Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another card making video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about multi-color embossing and I am showcasing brand new embossing glaze colors from Tim Holtz. Lots of new colors, 12 new colors in fact. I'm only going to use about I think seven of the new colors, eight, eight of the new colors today in my video, but I definitely will be using the ones I didn't use here today in future videos. They are absolutely beautiful and I love the new additions to the embossing glaze line. I love that Tim's coming out with more embossing glaze uh, that matches all of his other distress colors. So to start, I am going to stamp and emboss some backgrounds. And the name of the game today is multicolor embossing. So what I decided to do was stamp a background. And this first background I stamped, I think I missed turning my camera on, so sorry, is the, um, oh, let me get the name right, the Mixed Alphas background stamp. All of my background stamps are from Simon Says Stamp today. And I stamped that on some 110 pound weight Nina Smooth White cardstock using the Simon Says Stamp embossing ink. And then I am simply sprinkling on seven different colors of ink. And I'm going to repeat a few of them because I want there to be skinnier strips of color and not big strips of color. So there's going to be some repetition. I'm using fossilized amber, spiced marmalade, squeezed lemonade, mowed lawn. I want to make sure peacock feathers, mermaid lagoon, and seedless preserves. Those are the colors I am using. Now with a multicolor embossing done in this way, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this there is going to be a little waste. You could save all the mixed up embossing powder after you have done this if you want to and use it for something else. I will be honest, I usually pitch it. It is not that much and there is so much embossing powder even in these small containers. So I slide it off and there is my beautiful background. It is amazing. I love this technique. It's something I have done for years and years. Uh, I did a scrapbook page layout many, many years ago uh, with this technique and it still remains one of my favorite videos I've done as far as scrapbooking goes uh, because I just loved the technique so much. So we're, we're reinventing it for some card making here today. And what you end up with is a beautiful background that has multiple colors in embossing. And we're even going to do a little embossed resist in a little bit. Now with a background, any background that you're embossing, no matter if it's multiple colors or one color, it is going to take a little bit more work to emboss because it's just such a big surface area. So I am going to work on heating this all up. And I will say I realized after I did this background and I started working on the next background, I missed a couple of spots. So I will come back and hit that with the heat tool. But isn't it beautiful? You could do this in any color combination that you like. And again, I know it seems like a lot of embossing powder, but I promise there's tons left. So let's go ahead and do our second background. This is one of my all time favorites. This is the diagonal stripes. I have used this wonderful background stamp in so many ways, so many times over the years, and it remains one of my favorites. And I thought multicolor stripes for the diagonal background would be super duper fun. So I am going to go ahead and stamp this. And I will say I found my best results were inking up the stamp and stamping it twice. I am using my Misty to do that and I have a sticky mat in my Misty to help with that. And then we're simply going to do the same technique as before. Skinny stripes of embossing powder or strips, I guess, either one. And I'm just gonna work my way across the entire thing. Now I did start with four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels of cardstock. You could start with even bigger if you want to trim it down. I will trim mine to a scant 
four and a quarter by five and a half inches because I am going to make these full size shaker cards. And I like that little bit of wiggle room for wrapping the plastic or the shaker window around it and then adding my shaker material. So I generally find that I like it just a teeny tiny bit smaller, if, if not a little bit smaller. You could cut it to any size to place on your card front, but I really want it to be the full card front. I just like that little scant measurement cut off because I think it gives you better results. So this again is going to be the same process as before. Now our third and final background, there is not going to be any um, waste. We're, we can funnel it all back in and that's because it is a background stamp that is made to be stamped individually. And I'll show you what I mean. I've used it before, but it's awesome. So I just actually picked up a little bit of my powder and reapplied it to the side where I accidentally touched it. And we are going to heat set this. I don't know about you guys, but I love a good rainbow strip. Now something you could do and make th this background stretch further is you could cut this into strips that you put like along the side or the bottom of your card and you would have rainbow strips almost like you would have rainbow pattern paper um, and you make your own and I think that would be awesome as well. So lots of great ways to use this and again it's one of the reasons that a diagonal stripe background is so awesome in your crafting stash can be used in a lot of different ways. Oh my gosh, I love those. And then I just noticed that I didn't uh, get that. I didn't realize I left it in the video, but I, when I picked up my background, I thought, oh my gosh, uh, I can totally feel that I did not heat this very good at all. So we're just going to hit it with the heat tool again and make sure before we go to finishing. So our final background today is the Painted Rainbow. And this is a newer background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. And the great thing about it, it's one of the background stamps that pulls apart. And you can see mine is already pulled apart because I've used it already. But I'm going to position it here um, in my Misty, kind of making sure that I'm going to hit every stripe of the rainbow on my panel and then I'm going to remove everything I'm not using right now. So uh, you probably wouldn't have to do that this way but this worked really well for me. I'm going to start with the second stripe or painted arch from the top. I don't know why, I just did. And I am going to start stamping these. Now the great thing obviously about this background is that you can apply your embossing glaze one at a time and then funnel it back into the jar. Now the, one of the things about this is I did have some over stamping because I pressed too hard. So I'm using a dry paintbrush to remove those flakes each time. You're going to see a lot of that. This does take a little bit longer because you're literally stamping each one individually. Uh, I will speed it up here in just a second because it'll be the same process over and over. And I just have a regular sheet of printer paper. It's actually a, a to-do list on the other side for me. And I am using that piece of paper as my funnel today. So let's speed this up. Now I actually before I speed it up, one note. I like to clean the stamp I just used and then I take the next image, place that onto my, uh, the door of my Misty so that I make sure and have it lined up exactly and then I stamp it. So if you are using one of these pull apart background stamps, I highly recommend that you pull it apart or you, pardon me, that you place the next piece in place before you remove the one that you just stamped. That allows you for that placement, like I said, that is exactly where it's supposed to be. So you're gonna see me do this over and over throughout the creation of this background. And that allows me to figure out exactly which one is going where. And now we're gonna see it in super speedy time. I'm using all the exact same colors. In each of these backgrounds, I did end up using the same colors. There will be a couple of additions 
to what I'm showing in the backgrounds when we get to the greetings. And that is just mostly design wise. I did not have a specific card in, in mind when I created these backgrounds. This was play with brand new product. And then I grabbed supplies from my stash and came up with a card idea. Sometimes one of my favorite things to do if I don't, if I want to be creative, but I don't exactly know what I want to make is I'll make backgrounds, any kind of backgrounds. So in this case, we're playing with embossing glaze, play with the embossing glaze. Maybe you already have some in your stash and see what you can create. Um, it's a great way to kind of reinvigorate or inspire you as far as finishing. And I wanted the backgrounds to shine and that's why I went with a pretty simple finish as far as the full card front. But you could do literally anything with these. So a couple of my backgrounds, not necessarily the diagonal stripe, even though I am going to do the same thing, but my mixed alphas and then my painted rainbow have a lot of white space. And I don't want to cover that up, but I want to add to it. So I'm taking the My Favorite Things Happy Birthday background and some surf ink from Simon Says Stamp, and I am stamping a very light color over that background. It's going to be embossed resist. We will buff off any ink sitting on top of the embossed areas in a minute, but it gives a little additional interest to the background, especially because by this point, I do know that I'm going to do a full front shaker. And I want that background to be pretty interesting to account for the fact that I'm not really adding other dyes or stamped images to this card. I really love it on the painted rainbow. And you probably wouldn't need it for the, the uh, diagonal stripe, but I did go ahead and do it and I, I kind of like how it looks. Any text, by the way, would work here. I did go with a birthday background text, but you're not really gonna be reading it. So if you have a different text background, by all means, use it. Okay, so I am going to go ahead now and clean up my stamp and move that out of the way. And I'm just taking a dry cloth and I'm buffing any ink that might be sitting on top of the embossed areas off. Get those nice and clean. Oh my gosh, look how fun these are. I absolutely love them. So once we have that, it is time to um, add some greetings. And I have pulled out this big old greetings stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and Kathy Zilski, and I am going to stamp the greetings, but we're also going to do multicolor embossed greetings here. Now, this is where I was talking that I did end up pulling a couple of additional colors into what I'm already using. Um, from my stash, so previously released, we are going to pull in some candied apple, and I'll show you why. As I stamp the first two greetings that I'm using, um, we're going to use big birthday or big B day vibes and oh happy day. As I am applying the embossing powder, I don't want to do the full multicolor embossing powder for these. I just don't. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to not have waste with your embossing powder with this particular technique. But I, I want it to kind of just be an ombre effect of like one color to another or one color, one sh color family period. You'll see that in the last one. And I picked them based on the background. So from this point, I'm really m working with each individual background. These first two are for the diagonal stripe and the painted rainbow. And I'm going to apply the uh, spiced marmalade and fossilized amber. And when I'm looking at those colors, there wasn't another color kind of in that color family um, in this release, in the new release. So I went to my uh, stash of embossing glazes and I picked candied apple. I could have used the squeezed lemonade, but yellow to me just doesn't give that same effect um, that a darker color would. So for me, it was really worth it. And my embossing glaze was upside down. So it's just stuck. Uh, it was all, and I stored them upside down. So it was all at the top or at the lid part. That's why it looked funny. Um, but that is why um, I picked a color from my stash rather than a new one. Mix and match with what you have on hand if you want to pick up some of your favorite new embossing glaze colors. And it looks 
amazing when you heat these colors together. So you can see that even though I stamped this all at one time because it's one stamp, I applied my or my uh, Distress Glaze Pardon one at a time. And if there's a little overlap, that's okay. But I just wanted to be able to save all the embossing powder. And with this kind of technique, it worked great. Now, I didn't, wasn't, um, oh no, this one is fine. It's the next one. I'll show you that. I want to add a little sentiment strip to go with it. You guys know me. Almost always when I have a big greeting, I like a smaller sentiment strip to go with the larger greeting. And this stamp set comes with these already. So I'm going to prep my cardstock. I am using the Simon Says Stamp Powder Tool. And I'm gonna prep the cardstock, ink it up, and stamp that smaller greeting. This time, we're going to emboss with peacock feathers. I picked another new color, but I picked something different that I thought would really show up. We want to use something that is really going to show up um, since it's smaller text. The bigger greetings are gonna show up in your lighter colors maybe. I mean, red's not really light, but I generally like, you know, a blue, a brown, a gray, a black, something in that color family. So I picked Peacock Feathers and the Let's Celebrate shows up beautifully. We're going to go ahead and do the very same thing for Big B-Day Vibes, where we use the three colors, Spiced Marmalade, Fossilized Amber, nope. Abandoned Coral, not Fossilized Amber. I'm so sorry if I've been saying that. Abandoned Coral and Candied Apple. And then we'll do the smaller greeting in Peacock Feathers. And I did place the background back in my Misty at one point and re-stamped it and added another layer of the embossing glaze just to make sure that I got good coverage. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit just to save some time, but leave it in so you can see the entire process. I'm going to do a very similar technique for my final greeting for the mixed alpha background. However, that greeting is a little different than these two. Um, there's only two words, and I didn't wanna to try to squeeze three colors into that particular greeting. Plus, I felt like it needed something darker and bolder to show up against the mixed alpha. So we're only gonna go with two colors and we're going to do shades, or no, we are gonna do three colors, I lied. Uh, but we're gonna stay within the same color family, all blues, and this time I am going to use another new color, but one that I've not used anywhere else. It is the Chipped Sapphire. Chipped Sapphire is one of my favorite distress colors, by the way. That and Peacock Feathers, so I loved it. We're gonna do Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and Chipped Sapphire for our greeting. So it go, it's a beautiful ombre effect where it goes light to dark, and I think it shows up really, really nice. And then the rest of our greeting is going to be um, chipped sapphire as well, the happy, happy, because it's gonna read happy, happy birthday wishes for that card. And then we're going to take the coordinating dies for the big old birthday stamp set. We're gonna die cut all of our greetings. We're gonna use the sentiment labels from Simon Says Stamp and die cut all of those into, all the small greetings into strips. And then it's time to assemble our flat shaker cards. Um, I love flat shakers, no foam adhesive required, which I love. I've got some packaging here from a six by eight stamp set. I love to keep kind of the bigger stamp set or dies uh, packaging. I find it works really, really well to create the full size shaker. I am going to cut my panel at about five inches by however tall this packaging is. So I've, I'm going to just kind of cut the little seam at the top and the bottom just barely. I mean, it's hardly anything. It's not even an eighth of an inch. Um, we're just cutting off where, where it's connected. So that gives us two pieces, and that's two of the three shaker fronts that I need. Now, in addition, we also need to trim down our panels. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said I did end up cutting um, kind of a scant four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's more like probably four and an eighth. I don't know, I cut about an eighth of an inch off two sides. Honestly, it, it ends up not being very much. It still pretty much covers the entire front, but that little bit off, that eighth of an inch off two sides 
uh, a short side and a long side really allows for you wrapping the shaker material around your card panel. Now to make our shaker pocket, I like to use nice, strong tape adhesive I, for this. It works the best in my opinion. And then I like to do the long sides. So I'm wrapping my plastic around the two long sides and I, I'm doing a nice tight fit. Then I take my scissors and I kind of notch at an angle. Um, we're just gonna do the bottom right now because we want to kind of create a pocket to fill and then I go ahead and fold that up. I'm just gonna eliminate a little bit of that bulk. And I don't cut too close to the corner. I leave probably an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch or something. And then you can fill your pocket. And I have all these leftover sequins. I did not link these because these are something I've had forever and I think I'm gonna use up most of the rest of them. They're honeybee stamp sequins in rainbow. I was looking through my drawer and I saw these and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a great opportunity to use these. So um, if you, you can check Honeybee Stamps website to see if they have them or use something from your stash. I'm a huge fan of finding things in your stash to use. Um, and I decided to go ahead and make the pocket for all of my cards first and then I'll fill them so I can kind of evenly distribute all of the colors. And then I have the rest of my packaging that I'm also going to trim down. I was able to get all of my um, all of my shaker fronts, I guess I want to say, out of this one piece of packaging. I love that. And we're going to wrap this last one around and around. And then we're going to start filling. Now we're going to fill these, you know, you don't want to do it so full that you, that doesn't fit in the envelope, but I, it's a full size shaker. It's a full front shaker. So I like to have lots going on inside. Um, I want it, you know, to be pretty full. So whatever you prefer is what I would suggest here. And I'm just going and adding <laughs> a whole bunch of this to all of them. I think there were only a couple of colors that I maybe had a little bit left of. For the most part, not a lot. Then I had these awesome little color wheels, also from Honeybee Stamps, I believe. And so I put a, I threw a few of those in as well, just for fun, for added interest. I don't know about you guys, but I have so much shaker and confetti material that I have decided I need to start using it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill it up. And then I'm going to put adhesive at the top and shake it. And I think the more that you shake things and move it around, the more that your shaker card, uh, the more that the stuff in the shaker card moves. So I like to, you know, seal it and then shake it up and get that stuff moving around. Super, super fun. Now we are gonna be left with adding our greetings and placing these on our card fronts. So I am going to use, again, a strong adhesive. I'm attaching this to that, that packaging material. In my opinion, I just really like uh, a tape adhesive here. Liquid is going to take forever to dry, and sometimes the tape runners, I, I just worry that things will fall off. This specific tape, I'm using the Altenew tape here, the, is the big tape, and then I think I'm using Lawn Fawn for the small one, is nice and strong. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this multicolor embossing trio of cards featuring the brand new Tim Holtz Distress Glaze Colors for July 2023. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content, 
you'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.